To write down the wave function for a matter wave, we use the Greek letter capital Psi. So we can write a matter wave as Psi of x, y, z and t. This is showing that this is a wave function which is dependent upon the three spatial components x, y and z and also the temporal component t. Now in all the cases that we'll be looking at, we can actually separate the spatial and the temporal components. So we often use lowercase psi to represent just the spatial part of the wave function. So lowercase psi is a function of x, y and z. So we can write capital psi of x, y, z and t is equal to lowercase psi times e to the minus i omega t which shows us how we can separate out the spatial and the temporal parts. Okay, now physically what does this mean? Well physically this is again a probability wave. So the absolute magnitude of psi squared, that's the spatial part of the wave function squared, gives us the probability of finding the particle within a specified volume within a specified time interval. So mathematically when we write the psi with the absolute value signs around it, this is called taking the modulus of a complex number and the absolute value of psi squared is equal to psi star psi or the complex conjugate of psi times psi. So this is very similar to how using Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of a vector if it's got an x and a y component where instead of having x and y components now we've got complex and real components. Okay, so the important point there was that the only thing that we can measure physically is the probability of finding the particle within a specified volume and within a specified time and that's given by modulus of psi squared which is equal to psi star psi. Okay, so how do we go about finding what this wave function is for a specific situation? Well, to do that, we're going to need to use the Schrodinger equation. So in the next lesson, we'll be looking at what the Schrodinger equation is.